go. So good afternoon, this is Dr. Kathy, and I'm gonna to talk to you about essential oils and emotional blends. Now this is a, when I say a ticklish subject, it's the phrasing that's ticklish. I'm a former social worker. I was a social worker for more than 35 years, so I had the license to be able to diagnose emotional disorders. So I could talk about depression and anxiety and bipolar and all of those good things. Now, when we're talking about essential oils, though, and I could talk about maybe you need to get this medication. I rarely refer people to medication because I use energy-based healing to work with, with people. But if we talked about medication, I could use the terms, those types of things. Now, the FDA requires that with essential oils that we not use any terms which can be diagnosis type terms. And so like you may say, I feel depressed today. Well, we can't use the word depressed in relationship to essential oils because that is actually a diagnosis. Now I can talk about you being very sad. So you're gonna see me kind of bounce around. Is it okay for me to talk about it this way, Fatima? Okay, good, she's not, she's, the, she's my resource on this. And because I just will automatically go into things like that. So it's going to be interesting because this is right down my field to work with things, both with the oils and with diagnosis, not diagnoses, but with emotional disorders, because I worked with the emotions for all of those years. I still do as a life coach and doing energy-based healing. Now, the fun thing about essential oils for me is that is energy-based healing because essential oils have a particular vibration to them. And so the oils, as you use them on your body, resonates with different parts of yourself and aspects of yourself on an emotional level and also on a physical level. Remember that everything, everything affects your body your physical body. So if you're feeling sad, there's an automatic chemical reaction in your physical body. The uh, cortisol goes up. You start having these other, your immune system gets depressed. Other types of things show up. I'm just, for, for some reason, they've gone all out of my mind right now. But your body responds to everything. Your body responds to smell. You know, our sense of smell, triggers more memories than anything else. And it can trigger ha happy memories and it can trigger sad memories. So many of us, we feel really good when it smells like Christmas, but there are people when it smells like Christmas, they are sent into the depths of despair. So we're going to talk about how to work with oils on particular behavior patterns. And before I forget, let me share my screen because I actually did prepare something exciting. There we go. So I hope y'all are pleased with my skills. Although I don't, not real sure a friend of Wendy's and mine would be that pleased with my my uh, skills in regards to PowerPoint, but let's, ba behavior patterns are based upon emotional pain. Then our actions to lessen that emotional pain, the imprinting upon the brain and the results of what happens with the behavior pattern. So when you have, and those four steps are very important because Let's say the first time that you were crying in the crib as a baby and mom or dad's reaction was to either put you to the breast or give you a bottle. Let's say it wasn't that you were hungry at that particular time. Maybe you want to be held, which being put to the breast works real well. But sometimes with somebody just putting the bottle in and balancing it up, that doesn't work with the emotional pain. But you felt better because you were fed you felt better because all of the food has sugars in it, which act upon the brain. So there began to be this connection. So that's the actions to lessen the emotional pain. You learn that food, any of us here that might have problems with food, I'm one of those that has to be very careful about what I eat. 
basically sugar and carbs will just set me off. I did real well today. I went to the grocery store and I did not buy the ice cream on sale. So I didn't buy it not on sale either. I just didn't buy it. And I was really proud of myself because eating for me was to release and soothe the emotional pain that was in my, in my body, not in my body, in my family. I could feel it in my family also. Then when you do certain actions like food or, you know, some people cut on themselves and people who cut on themselves, they feel their physical pain decreases their emotional pain. It overrides their emotional pain. So they may form a habit of cutting on themselves. Well, those habits are then imprinted upon the brain. There's a chemical reaction that happens in the brain and one neuron fires off, then another fires off. So you have that imprinting on the brain and this results in behavior patterns, which can just be very difficult. So think about some of your behavior patterns that you may have. So whether it's um, overeating, over drinking, over drugging, over sexing, over shopping, procrastination, just not being able to be motivated at all. All of these are behavior patterns that can, that can occur. So I'm going to use problem drinking and alcoholism, and this actually will go for any type of addiction. So the emotional pain that you have from problem drinking and alcoholism is that you may have feelings of loss. You may have family problems that are going on. You may have low self-esteem. You may have that wanting to forget. I know of one man who, uh, unfortunately, he had introduced his best friend to heroin and Several years later, his best friend died from a bad batch of heroin. And he continued, this young man continued to drink to forget of his, son, of his friend's death. So there would be that type of forgetting that would occur. Other people with things like problem drinking or alcoholism, I'll, there's a difference between problem drinking and alcoholism. I'll tell you about that in a minute but any type of addiction is that it then sets into a pattern that causes long range problems. So here you have the emotional pain with loss, family problems, low self-esteem, wanting to forget. And then that moves you to actions to lessen the pain. The pain becomes overwhelming. You discover drinking or sugar or cutting on yourself or shopping or gambling that that, suppresses the pain then when you get sober the pain comes back sometimes in spades which is an interesting thing to say talking about gambling isn't it and then you drink gamble sex eat more that type of thing so then what happens is the habit is traced upon the brain and very importantly to know this is that the pleasure centers are activated in the brain those pleasure centers in the brain are very, very strong. And in fact, the same pleasure centers that are activated by using cocaine, alcohol, is activated when eating sugar in almost all of us. So that's why sugar is an addictive substance. Aren't you glad to know that it's not just a loss of self-control? So then the results of the behavior patterns is that you have family problems. So I worked in a substance abuse uh, treatment program for a few years. And to see the destruction in the family was, was heartrending to see what happened. We had that own destruction in, in my own family with, with a couple of addicts that were in there. Everybody's focus was on that person. They would get frustrated. They would become angry. They, all types of things that would happen. Then work problems that sometimes that interferes with working and especially if you're if you're using alcohol of course not being sober at work if you hear a lot of wrestling in the background freaking fracker wrestling so that's what that noise is if you hear that so then you have the work problems even if it's sugar for instance because there's a low okay guys <laughs> there's a low that occurs with that when 
the sugar drops, gambling, well, of course, that sets off all types of things. Now think about lack of motivation, procrastination. You're not able to get things going to do things and you end up with legal problems, then you drink or use more. Same thing with overeating. Humans need food. This is the big problem about people that have a food addiction is that you don't, you don't need alcohol. I'm sorry I'm distracted with the guys. I thought one of them was eating a package. You need food, you don't need alcohol. Food also is a social activity. Think of all the celebrations that we have. Christmas, New Year's, Easter, Hanukkah. I mean, all of those social activities where food is a major part of that. It's connected to good feeling, celebration. I mean, what we did when we graduated, we went out to eat. Then it forms that psychological connection again, activates the pleasure centers in the brain. Every pattern of behavior that is addictive activates the pleasure centers in the brain. So remember that because what you're working with is not only an emotional disorder, you're lurk, working with a neurologic, neurological imbalance that that occurs. So now back to overeating. Oh, I already did that one, didn't I? Humans need food. Processed food is addictive. Salt, sugar are addictive. Did y'all know that? Salt itself is addictive. Sugar itself is addictive. And then the chemicals the food industry puts in it are addictive. I've been doing a lot of research and study on this for, for people. And remember the cigarette industry when it came out that they were putting all those addictive substances in there? They're doing the same thing with food. The exact same thing with food. And by the way, the people that own the, the cigarette companies now own the food industries. So if you look at overeating, it's a social activity. The family celebrations, the parties, the birthdays, the graduations, again, the pleasure centers. And then overeating is used as an, a reward. Psychological connection is formed, again, pleasure centers. You can actually have a release of oxytocin because it's connected with connection. Then the emotional pain resulting, the, emotion, the psychological connections to the past, the pleasure centers in the brain are activated because of that connection, because of what happens. So as soon as you eat, you feel better. As soon as you drink, you feel better. As soon as you're in the process of gambling, you feel better. As soon as you're procrastinating, that as long as you're playing a video game or reading a book, my favorite would be reading a book or watching television or doing something else, you feel better because you're not thinking about that. All of that is happening. Um, then you have the psychological issues, the emotional issues that occur afterwards from any of the addictions, any of the behavior patterns which are negative is that you end up with low self-esteem, you have shame, These um, you think you're not good enough, you think, you know, you wanna go, my favorite thing is to say, I wanna go find the deepest hole I can find and get under it. Then let's look at press procrastination. Procrastination usually begins with fear. Now, some of us, you have to understand that we're talking about procrastination that really interferes with your life because we're made differently. Our brains are made differently. Our whole way of being is made differently. Anybody who's taken the, the Myers-Briggs type inventory is that you'll know that there are a, no, a number of different qualities. There are four pairs of characteristics of people, introversion, extroversion, intuitive, and sensor, sensory-based thinker and a feeler and what they call a judger and a perceiver. Well, judges and perceivers, one of the things you'll have is somebody who's a judger is very, and it doesn't have anything to do with judging. I don't know why they named it that, but they like detail. They like things in order. They like to know when time is. If you tell them that the project is due at 12 o'clock on Monday, they will have it there probably in the morning on Monday. Somebody who's a perceiver, they, mm, time is, mm, time, mm, well, you know, maybe, maybe we'll get it there. They see deadlines as a uh, suggestion. 
they have to gather and gather lots of information. Well, that is kind of hardwired into you. It, no, stop. That is hardwired into you. They were real quiet until I sat down here, folks. The dogs were just, they were asleep. They let me do get everything ready and now they're just acting up completely and there's no place for me to put them. So when you have the procrastination part, the part that really interferes, you wanna come sit on my lap? The one that really interferes is that there's fears that are associated with it. Many times it's the fear of failure or it's the fear of not having enough information. It's the fear that they're gonna leave out one thing that's just not gonna be right. Can be also a lack of self-confidence, going back to the fear of failure. Sometimes it's a lack of prioritizing. Again, a lack of focus, and of course there could be patterns in the brain that can affect that. Lack of focus is a big one for people who have, you know, going, oh, squirrel, oh, look, there goes Frack, and he's going into his crate, good, you know, so I can get distracted so easily. Uh, I use one of the doTERRA blends, the Intune blend, to keep myself focused. So what happens is you have your brain, you have your neurochemicals, you have your hormones, they are all the physiological components in all behavior patterns. Then you also have whatever is going on with you emotionally and the wounds that are there and how to bring healing. Now that's a total different presentation. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about blends for mind-body balance. Now that's my field, mind-body. That's my doctorate is in mind-body psychology. So the way that I look at everything is that whatever you think, whatever you feel, whatever you experience has an instantaneous effect upon your body. So it's all together. If you have something going on with your body, then I help you get in touch with the emotional issues or the spiritual issues or the mental issues that are involved with that problem. So when you're working on blends for mind-body balance and and especially for behavior patterns, there's multiple aspects. So you may be afraid of, I have, one of my sisters is afraid of cats. She's just afraid of cats. When her now attorney son was four, he would protect her from the kitten that was the neighbor's kitten, you know, uh, as a four-year-old so that she wouldn't get upset. Now she wouldn't get upset in front of him, but they knew she was afraid of cats. It was just a straight thing. Nothing else that was there. But when you look at behavior patterns, you have the original cause, which is emotional or it's physical. Think about walking with, you know, you've got something in your shoe, but you can't stop. And so you're kind of limping along. Well, when you're limping along, it's throwing your knee out of balance, it's throwing your hips out of balance, it's throwing your backs out of, back out of balance, it's throwing your neck out of balance. So just that one little pebble that's in your shoe is throwing everything out of balance. But when you have something that happens emotionally, it can throw you out of balance. So if you're afraid of cats, for instance, that limits places where you can go. If you have a child that really wants a cat, then you might end up feeling guilty, but you're not gonna have that cat in that house. You know, so those are emotional things that happen and then you feel like a bad mom and oh my, oh no, he's gonna become an ax murderer and what's gonna happen? So these patterns just go and go and go and your mind goes and goes. Then you have the brain imprinting. Now let's talk about it in the sense of feeling really, really nervous about something is that if you're really, really nervous about say taking a test and it could have had to do, believe it or not, with, with something that happened when you were trying to learn how to do something when you were three years old and you couldn't do it and maybe dad got upset or mom got upset or they were disappointed and you just felt terrible. And so then what happens is whenever you get ready to take a test, then you think about anything else that can happen. You don't focus on anything. You procrastinate. You fail. 
that keeps the pattern going, you begin to feel not good enough that you're not intelligent. Again, a brain imprinting. Cortisol goes up in your system. You just have those responses within you physiologically. And then, of course, the results of what happens when all of this is occurring add to that behavior pattern and to the negativity. Now, blends have, since behavior patterns have multiple aspects, this is why essential oil blends are so wonderful because you can address different aspects of the blends that happen. So I want you to think about the emotional symptoms of something in the mind body. So when you think of nervousness, sleep problems, they could just tick off the ones you might have. You may not have them in severity. They may just be minor that you can overcome easily. Nervousness, sleep problems, extreme sadness, inability to focus, mood swings. Here you're happy, no you're not, you're real happy. Oh, here comes that song that reminds you of when you lost your boyfriend when you were 16. You know, you're all of those things, then the, the sadness due to loss that you have, digestion issues, mental exhaustion, you're just dealing with so much, confusion, you're not, your mind's not clear, you're feeling overwhelmed. All of these things are having an impact upon your body, which, going back to the essential oil vibration, your body has a vibration. It has an effect upon you. And so when we use the essential oils, it, in a sense, assists in reducing the out-of-control vibration that is there. That would be one way of expressing it. So let's look at some blends. I, wanted, I went, did some work just to look up some oils that were used for certain symptoms. So think of a low mood. Now... Those of you who are on the phone, you can't see this, but I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 oils, and I'm sure there are more that are known to lift one's moon, mood. So just to give you an idea, there's basil, bergamot, clary sage, geranium, ginger, grapefruit, jasmine, rosemary, lavender, lemon, lemongrass, orange, patchouli, rose, ylang ylang, and one I had never seen ago before, Litsia cuba, cubiba, C U B E B A. I've looked it up. It's primarily used in the perfume industry and it is known as a mood lifter. So just think of that. You have all of those oils that you could use for a low mood and more oils. Now, here's another one. And remember, when you get the video, you can look at all of these. They're all right there. If you want to calm down, you come in from a tough day. Maybe everything's been just going at you. Wham, 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 wham. You're up high like this in regards to nervousness, and you just want to calm down, just to calm. So you can use basil, clary sage, geranium, juniper berry, lavender, lemon, marjoram, and pine. Those are really good to assist you in that, in that area. And then, let's see, when you're muddled, you know your mind is all muddled, to clear the mind, just to relax, basil, cardamom, rosemary, spearmint, and peppermint. You're getting an idea? We all feel that way. To calm agitation. Agitation is a little bit different, but it all goes in together. Again, a lot of different oils. Lavender, bergamot, clary sage, orange, patchouli, jasmine, ylang ylang, German chamomile, frankincense, mandarin, marjoram, vetiver, and rose. Okay, so here you have, these are symptoms. So think of a behavior pattern you have right now that's causing trouble. And just in your mind or on paper, what you have is list the symptoms. Just think about that. Isn't it possible that you have, let's see if we can find these, low mood, you need to be calmed, 
You need to have your mind cleared. You need to reduce agitation. So let's look at these. I'm just picking three of them. I'm picking the agitation, the clearing the mind, and the low mood. So this is one of the ways to look for how to make a blend for yourself. Now you can do a search on good old Google or whichever search, uh, what do they call that thing? Search tool that you have. I use Google. And you can look all this stuff up. I have found this stuff through this, through books, that sort of thing. So on this, on, so you put your symptoms together. So let's say you have agitation, your mind feels muddled, and you have a low mood. So I list all of these oils down here, and I looked for those that are common to these. Now, one of the things I noticed is that there are no oils in which it is in all three places. So the ones that are the same, there are a number of them that are in two of them. So lavender is in two, bergamot is in two, clary sage is in two, orange, patchouli, jasmine, ylang ylang, rose, let's see, basil, rosemary, patchouli. They're all there in the twos of them. So here I have this list, and I have th three of them right here, the agitation, the clear mind, and the low mood. So I could muscle test, if you know to muscle test. I could use the pendulum. If you're a chemist and you know the, how the chemical attributes of each oil fits in with what happens with your body and your mind, you can use that information. So I'm just going to do something for me. I'm just going to say I want to, I would like to see which of these oils would be best for me. So I'm going to muscle test. I'm just going to tell you how to do this. Is that uh, we did muscle testing, by the way, in the last video. So if you want to catch that, you can do that. Just go to the last video and you can find it. So I'm looking under this one for agitation. And I'm just going to say, is there, and I have in mind what I want to, calm myself. I want to um, have one of my behavior patterns in mind. And I go, is there anything in agitation? No. Is there anything in the clear mind? Yes. And there's one in there that's not in any of the others, and that's cardamom. And I'm also getting that rosemary would be very good. And rosemary is not in agitation, but it is in the low mood to help lift the low mood. And then, and then I'm finding that peppermint would also be helpful for me to bring clarity to myself. So cardamom, rosemary, and peppermint. And I would jot that down on a piece of paper. Then I would look at the low mood list and go, is there anything in there that's not in the others that would be good? Is there? And actually, I got no. So I have those three. That's what I have for my thing. Now, let me show you something. Here's a list. And... This is taken from the website biosourcenaturals.com. Biosourcenaturals.com. It's on the PowerPoint, so you can see it when you get the video, if you don't have it. And I just looked up essential oils for addiction. Now, this isn't all of them. This is the one that this source uses. So they have... These are the different addictions that they have, that they have listed. So they have alcohol, I don't know if I can say that word, caffeine, cravings, drugs, eating disorders, food, porn, sex, sugar, tobacco, withdrawal symptoms, work addiction. And they have oils in each one of those. Again, you could go through each one, you could muscle test, you could make your blend. And instead, we're going to talk about blends because blends are a wonderful place to start. So I'm going to just go through, I think, three of them I selected, common blends that doTERRA has. Now, some of you I know are with Young Living or with, are with another co company. So the general name is a calming blend. Now, in a calming blend that I got from somewhere else, they might have Lavender, sweet marjoram, Roman chamomile, ylang ylang, sandalwood, vanilla. Now doTERRA has lavender flower, cedarwood, 
whole wood leaf, and that's spelled H-O, and I do not know of the whole plant, but it is not what some people talk about in regards to other folks, okay? So it's a plant, ylang lang flower, marjoram leaf, Roman chamomile flower, the vetiver root, the vanilla bean absolute, which I believe is a fluid that they use, the Hawaiian sandalwood wood. Now you may notice that some is the flower, some is the leaf, some is a root, some is the wood. Each one of those qualities of that plant can produce different reactions within your body. And so the chemists that put these together know exactly how to balance that it's better to use the lavender flower for here than say maybe the lavender leaf that it's better to use the marjoram leaf rather than part of the stem or the root. So you have all of these that are in there with doTERRA and you'll notice that doTERRA has something in there like the whole wood. That's not an oil that you can get as a single oil. So they bring in all of these different characteristics. That's one of the wonderful things about blends that are from a company that you know and trust that can work with this. Now this is the blend for serenity. That's the doTERRA name. So that's what we use. And I use that a lot. And just to relax, to calm down, that's what I use. Now here's another blend. And so this is an uplifting blend. And the general recipe for this that I got off, uh, I think I got this out of the book, is lemon, basil, rosemary, cypress, and frankincense. Now notice what doTERRA, and I'm sure those of you who are with Young Living, theirs is also whatever they call their cheer blend, they will have a lot of different essential oils also. So this use wild orange peel, clove bud, lemon myrtle leaf, nutmeg kernel, vanilla bean extract, the ginger rhizome, of course that's the, you know, that's what ginger is when you buy it in the grocery store, it's called a rhizome, cinnamon bark, and I have Z-D-R-A-V-E-T-Z. -E I meant to look that up and I forgot to look that up. And then star anise, the fruit and the seed. So again, you could see how you can, how the blends that come from the companies ha are much more involved and have many more qualities within them. Whereas if you're putting together a blend yourself, you're gonna use just a few things here. So you'll use these parts that are right here, say for instance, in what we call generally the uplifting blend, lemon, basil, rosemary, cypress, and frankincense. When you're, I'm going a little off script here, but when you're making this for yourself and you say, oh look, here's lemon, basil, rosemary, cypress, and frankincense. Now when I was reading it, this particular one did not give the number of drops that you can muscle test for that because there are qualities in each one of the oils that you may need at different strengths than others. And so that's where the muscle testing comes in. So again, I'm gonna use for me, that if I were going to use just these general qualities for the uplifting blend, these five that are in here, and Fatima, I'm gonna pick on you, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna muscle test that if I was making this for Fatima, I'm just going to connect with her heart to heart, that's how I always do things. And knowing Fatima, I have permission to do this. And she, so I'm doing that and I'm gonna ask. And she put a thumbs up for me. And so I'm going to be asking, and I'm gonna put this in a 10 milliliter roller bar, roller ball, I do that all the time, roller ball. And I'm asking how many drops? So I'm gonna start with lemon first. Is that something that's important for Fatima to have? Yes. How many drops for Fatima's blend? It, would it be less than 10? No. Would it be more than 10? Yes. 10 to 15. So I'm going to then narrow it down. 10 and only 10. No. 11 and only 11. No. 12. So her best blend would be 12 drops of lemon essential oil. How about basil? Yes. And then I ask how many drops would be best for her? Um, I'm getting intuitively less than 10. I'm testing it with muscle testing. Yes, um, nine and only nine, eight. Eight drops for her of the basil. 
than rosemary. Yes, that's important. And I got, that's very important for Fatima for whatever the qualities are within rosemary. More than 10, yes. More than 15, yes. More than 20, no. Between 15 and 20, yes. 20 and only 20, no. So I'm going to go 16 and only 16, 17. 17 drops of rosemary for her. And again, I don't know the qualities. Fatima, if you don't mind, maybe you could look up the qualities in rosemary that might, that, and you can share that with people. Then cypress. She doesn't need much cypress. Less than five. So is it four, three? She only needs two drops of cypress, but she needs two drops of cypress. So never discount if it's one drop, two drop, no matter how many, she only needs two. Frankincense, uh, between one and 10, no, between 10 and 15, yes, between 10 and 13, no, so then it has to be 14, 14 and only 14, 14 drops of frankincense. So if I just used this formula, that's what I would give to her, and then I would put that in, those drops in the rollerball, I'd fill it with the fractionated coconut. Actually, uh, Fatima, I get for you that for this particular blend, what would be best for you is almond oil. Because that in itself is an essential oil. When you think about that, it's an essential oil. So um, I'm going to unmute you, Fatima. Did you find out the qualities in rosemary that you might need? Um, can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay. Looking it up right now, I do know off the bat that rosemary is extremely good for memory and for hair loss. I'm not having hair loss issues. Um, I don't think I'm having memory issues, but I may be having memory issues. I don't know. Anybody who can't remember if they're having memory issues or not. <laughs> um, but I'm looking at the book, and in terms of emotional issues, it just says um, really good for emotional balance, which I think all of us, you know, are everybody needing. needs, and especially a mother of children. Right, right. Um, Most mothers. And that's just children. one page, you know, from the book that I'm looking for. There's Some so much more on rosemary. I was just looking up the section in here on addictions and on um, overeating and things like that. And there's a couple of them with lemon and rosemary and stuff but they're different they're different throughout so it may be something in here it may be sugar i mean i know that i go to sugar when i'm stressed out maybe that has something to do with it okay and i'm going to tell you that we really don't need to know why right and it i just found it interesting and some people are very inquisitive they have a mind that just is extremely inquisitive and so they want to know the whys. For me, I just want the solution. I used to want to know the whys. Now I just want the solutions. So I wanted to show you that I do, I did Serenity and then we did the, um, the cheer. Now I'm gonna show you, I just chose five of the doTERRA emotional blends. Now balance, just wanted to show you, it says it may help ease now they're using anxious feelings. It evokes feelings of tranquility and balance. Then cheer promotes feelings of optimism, cheerfulness, and happiness. Now notice you can also choose by going to, like you could go to the doTERRA site and it has all of their blends and they will say what it does. I'm sure Young Living has the same thing. I'm sure all the other different sources that you can get oils have the same. Just be sure you get a source that is good quality oils. So cheer promotes feelings of optimism, cheerfulness, and happiness. Counteracts negative emotions or feeling down, blue, or low. Console feelings of comfort and hope. It counteracts negative emotions of grief, sadness, and hopelessness. Forgive promotes feelings of contentment, relief, and patience. It counteracts negative emotions of anger and guilt. Motivate, you know, to get over that procrastination, promotes feelings of confidence, courage, and belief. And then counteracts negative emotions of doubt, pessimism, and cynicism. Now they have an, a lot of blends. 
and you can check with that now how to make your now let me i don't even think hold on let me go through my little list i don't okay so if you were going to start with a blend wendy fisher can i pick on you okay so i'm just going to use of those five blends here i'm going to connect with wendy from heart to heart my heart to her heart and I'm going to ask which of those five blends would be best for Wendy. And I don't have any idea where she is in any other way other than what I read about her from Facebook of where else is going on in her life. So of these five, I'm asking, is there one in particular that would be helpful for her? And I'm getting yes. And I'm just going to, is it balance? No, is it cheer? No, is it console? No, it, oh, Wendy, it's forgive. All of us have those kind of issues that show up, so there's forgive. Now, those of you who are on some of the earlier calls may remember that I was developing for myself a pain blend because I had severe problems with my shoulder. And I first started with looking up on Pinterest Pinterest is a wonderful resource if you don't know about it. And I would just put essential oil blends for pain. And it gave me a formula. And I then muscle tested to see if the number of drops that it gave me was the best for me. And then adjusted that formula. And then I said, is there anything else? And I got yes. And I kept muscle. And I, and I asked, is it a single oil? or is it a blend? I got it was a blend. And then I went down the list of doTERRA blends and I got forgiveness that I needed to add. I can't remember how, I think it was five drops of forgive. Now forgive consists of a number of different oils, but it was five drops of forgive that I needed to add to my pain blend. And within three weeks, the pain started going down, but within three, I hardly have any pain at all in that shoulder. Now I slept funny on it last night and I thought, oh, I've got to get out my pain blend again. But that was really helpful. So with for, forgive for, for Wendy, that would be something I would add. Are there other oils that would be good to add? And I'm getting a yes, Wendy. So I'm going to go to, I'm asking a particular slide and I got yes. And this is the slide I got. So I'm going to look down this list. Da, 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 da. I got to add some bergamot, B-E-R-G-A-M-O-T. I keep putting an N in it, mot, but it's mot. Bergamot, and to add to forgive, like how many drops of forgive? 10 drops of forgive, and then to add 10 drops of bergamot to that. And anything else? No, fill it with fractionated coconut, any, any of the oils that you would like to use, fractionated coconut oil, almond oil, avocado oil, whatever, and use it for a rover bar. I'm going to muscle test where would be the best place to put it um, on your heart. So that's how, you, that's how you do that. It's really easy to do that. So when you're looking for making your blend, you can identify your major symptoms. What are the major symptoms that you want to address? If it's on the physical level, is it pain? Is it lack of flexibility? If it's on the mental level, do you need clarity of mind? Do you need to calm your nervous system down? Is that what's going to be best? So you can find the oil once you have your symptoms. I would suggest that, now you could do this intuitively without muscle testing, without using your pendulum. Now the way you do this intuitively, let's say you list all your symptoms and you have 358 symptoms, but we'll narrow it down to the top three, okay? Because it's really, you'll find it when you start listing everything, they all come under just a few symptoms and you can just go inside into your heart and that's how I do things, I focus on my heart and I go, which symptom is the priority? Which symptom is the priority? And so I might get um, nervousness is the priority. And that might actually surprise me. I go, oh, I didn't think that was the priority. But what 
your, we call it innate wisdom of the body, is telling you that nervousness is what I need. So I would look for either a blend or I would look for oils that address nervousness. Now, I myself, these are the two ways I would do it. First, I go look at my the blends that I have. And I ask, will, it will one of these blends be as the base for me to get started? So it's kind of like this gives me the base and whatever blend it is. And so forgive is a big one for me, by the way. So I'll say, is it forgive? And I get yes. And I ask how many drops to put in the roller bar, roller ball, how many drops to put in the roller? You'd think I'd been on a Jeep or something that turned over and rolled around and you needed those roller balls, <laughs> those ball, those bars on it. So, and I would identify how many drops of forgive. I would ask if I knew what was in forgive and I knew I had some of those oils, I would then ask, do I need any more of one of these oils? And again, I can do it intuitively going inside or muscle testing using the pendulum. Those of you who know how to do that and then add that number of drops. Then I may ask, are there any other oils anywhere? Now, I, when I say anywhere, I'm talking about the ones in my box <laughs> that I have. My oils in my box are any of these that I need to add. And sometimes I do find one. Very rarely is it two, but often there is one that I need to add. And I add that, finding out how many it is. I add that. Now, I use fractionated coconut oil. I do happen to have some avocado oil here. If absolutely necessary, I'd go out and get some almond oil, but those I have those two available for me. The fractionated coconut oil I use only for my oils, the avocado oil I cook with it. So I would, after I get the oils, the number of drops, I put them in there. I ask what carrier oil if you have a number of them. Fractionated coconut oil is usually just fine for me. And then you put it in the bottle and you just mix the fool out of it. Really get it in there. Now, uh, Fatima and I have been talking about how essential was, and she was talking about one of the physicians that works with doTERRA. Because I was thinking intuitively, I was getting that it works like homeopathy, in which when you mix homeopathy, if you're not familiar with homeopathy, let's just say the more that it's diluted, the stronger it is. Very counterintuitive. And that we're finding that with oils, I'm getting to where I'm probably going to start putting a, all of my oils in a roller ball. I did it right, roller ball. Put all of my oils in a roller ball and dilute those things. But then I shake them up and then I pray over them. And I basically, it's a very simple prayer. I ask that they be blessed and that they be aligned to the vibration. Now, of course, vibration is real important to me because that's what I work with. So you could say that it just be aligned to the needs that I have. I say to the vibration that I need. And then where do I apply it? So like I didn't say where for Fatima, she could apply the oil, that formula that we gave her. She could apply it on her wrists the pulse points, the pulse points on her neck, her ears. Those are the main places that I get for her. So for like Wendy, I got on the heart. I have one that I actually developed. It was after, um, it was a really huge uproar between someone I love very dearly. And I felt myself closed down. I mentioned this last time. I felt myself closed down and I could tell that. And it wasn't just closing down to them. It was closing down to everyone. So I developed one to loosen hardness of heart. And I got to put it over my heart. And so that's what I do with it. Put it over my heart. So that's what I wanted to, to share with you. I... I know that there are those of you here that are have your own company or you're already doTERRA folks, but if you're interested in becoming and joining the doTERRA team with me, I'd love to have you on my team. We're going to do lots of fun things together. One of them is you'd receive healing all the time. You'd receive healing often. We have a tremendous upline. 
And so if you're interested in working with the oils as a business or even as a side business, just enough to, you know, pay for your oils in a sense, I would be delighted to work with you. Um, and you'll have this, you'll learn how to do that. Well, you'll get a roller par ball with your special recipe, the excellent training, monthly group healing sessions to remove limiting locks and belief, blocks and beliefs, which will work on any area of your life for sure. Fatima, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, no, I don't think so. This was fabulous though, Kathy. This was so concise because the information out there on, on emotions and oils is so vast that sometimes it's really hard to, to figure out what's going on. And this was just um, incredible value. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Wendy, did you want to add something? Yeah. Um, when you gave me the um, my 10 um, forgive and 10 berg, bergamot. It is. Bergamot, yeah. Yes. Do I actually put those in the roller ball and fill it with the... Um, with the oil? Yeah. With the, and, and that's that is, all I that's, need is 20 that, drops in the whole roller that's ball? That's all you need in the entire roller ball. Really? Yeah. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. And, and it's, it's, uh, y'all may see me kind of looking to the side because I know what you're not, well, here, let me share. There, because you're, there was a strip of stuff on the side with all of you that was there. So yes, that's all you need. Get here, Terry. And that's what I meant by, it's amazing how the strength of these are just as strong. And I wouldn't be surprised if in some cases, because you put these oils together, there's a synergistic effect mm. and they uplift each other and work together with each other. It's just amazing how that happens. So that's mm. all you need. You need just to drop the drops in the, in the bottle, add the carrier oil, shake it. And you can just hold it against your heart. You don't even have to say yeah. any words. Just hold it against your heart. And I would suggest you do that each time you use it mm -hmm. and then put it on your, on your heart, which is where yours were, but that's all you needed. Hmm. Wow. I, I would have never picked forgive um, out of all of them, but that's what came to you. That's and, what came up. Yeah. And I'm really shocked that you only put 20 little drops in the, in the <laughs> rest is all. I just, um, a lot of the stuff I use, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I just put it on full strength. And I probably should not be, but, but I just do, because I don't know how to use them, you know? So that's really interesting. And see, and you, wow. you can put them on full strength. Some people will have irritations. I do. <laughs> to where the, well, at the very least, put another oil on it. Yeah. Like, or olive oil or co fractionated coconut oil or almond oil, put that on it before you put the other. We call putting yeah. them on full strength neat in the AT. Okay. And so it really would be better to dilute it. I've been, I follow this chemist on, um, on Facebook. Hmm. I was going to give you his name. What's his name, Fatima? Dr. Pappas. Dr. Pappas. Oh. And he suggests, he's a chemist. He says, don't ever put it neat on your skin always dilute it mm, wow always okay. dilute it that's what he says wow okay and, and it's and it's just a lot cheaper to do that and by the way yeah. you you can get the oils without being deciding to sell them or anything like that you yeah. know you can sign up for a wholesale account and you can get the oils at a very big reduction in price hmm. okay. okay okay thank, thank you. you that was yeah. a good question thank you Anybody else? I can't see you. So if let me just go, go through my thing. Just if you're Teresa. Teresa, she wants to say something. She's okay, Teresa. I'm not surprised Teresa wants to say something. <laughs> She's one of those with the inquisitive mind. You're unmuted, Teresa. Okay, I just... Oh, you were trying to, to get your stuff fixed out. up. Sorry. Um, my question is, uh, because I was surprised that you said you couldn't put the uh, the oil on the uh, on the heart. 
And so you I'm could thinking, not? Okay, I guess that at this point it's not about. Wait a minute, scent. Teresa, hold on. Did you say that I said you could not put the oil on the heart? So, sorry, you, you suggested that uh, to Fatima and to Wendy that they put the oil on the heart instead of on the wrist or close to the it was on the pulse points. Okay. And yeah. But my question is this, like at this point, it's not about um, the sense of the smell hasn't having an effect with the oils. It's about the energy encoded in the oils. It all, it, it's all of it. Do you understand? It's all of it. It's all of it. Uh, I've, I've seen these necklaces that you can wear where you can put oils in it and then it's oh, yeah. throughout the day it just evaporates into his nose. Right. Does uh, did Clara use any of that or do sure, you know what you I'm talking about? That. Yeah, I do know what you're talking about. You can use that. There's several different ways to bring the oil into your system. One of them is to breathe them. Like you can drop it on your hands and rub it and and just inhale it. Yeah. The other is to use it under a diffuser, which also gets the aromas out into the room. We're just happening in this series of talks. We're working with the rollerball. Yeah, okay. That help? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Sue, are you waving? I saw you and now I lost you. If you can unmute yourself, that'd be great. Well, okay, I'm, I'm unmuted. I was just saying I was getting ready to go. <laughs> oh, okay, goodbye. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn, you unmuted yourself, so you must have something. Um, I'm ha having a real issue with doubt. Now, I thought doubt was more of a spiritual thing, and I'm not sure now. I'm just sort of questioning it all. Um, Doubt can be a mental thing. So climate, climate change, which is in the news a lot, that's a mental thing, okay. correct? Then it can be an emotional thing. I doubt I can do that. I doubt you can do that. I doubt I can trust you. You know, so then you have that, and then doubt can be a spiritual, which means it's you go up in the vibration. It can be a spiritual thing, and doubting your connection to, to spirit, doubting spirit's connection to you. It's doubting about what I can bring into my life, what I'm what I'm manifesting. So I am trying to bring something into my life, another guy. And um, I find that I am doubting his, um, I'm just not believing him that he is real. Like, can there be such a thing as, as um, he's too good to be true. And, and I'm getting intuitively that that's an, on an emotional doubt for you. So when you're selecting oils to work with, with this particular issue, that I'm, I'm uh, getting that there would be some oils that would fit for the vibration on a spiritual level for you, and one of that is unworthiness. The other would be that doubt that, the doubt that's his possibility, that he's out there or that it's a possibility that he would come to you. And so that would be two different levels. See, we're now approaching to getting very complex in how we're doing it. So it would be two different levels of, He's of out down. Oh. Hey. Annie in the announcement in an hour. So, so then you might want to think about the two types of doubt that you're having. Well, I think they're both because he's out there we've already connected and he's on the job and then he sort of cut me off in order to keep himself focused mm -hmm. from what he says so i've had to draw back and then i keep on thinking i'm never going to hear from him again holy crap something's wrong with me what did i do i get i it's 
it's like I keep on second guessing myself and then I think, well, I'm never going to hear from him again. Mm -hmm. And all of that may be true, <laughs> right? You just don't know because we're facing those things. Yeah. And we face yeah. those things in our life. And then how do we work with those? How do we handle that? And so you might need a couple of different rollerballs to address that issue. <laughs> I don't think that brought any clarity, but it did give you some information. <laughs> <laughs> Something to think about. Anything else? Yes, Kathy. Yes, Annie. Um, how much carrier oil do we use with the drops, or do we use a different amount with each? If you get a 10 millimeter milliliter yes. roller ball, yes, you usually just fill the rest of, to the. Okay. Okay. Fill it up, and then you can just fill that up with it. Now, mm -hmm. I actually sometimes intuitively I'll go, you don't need that much oil, and then I will muscle test to see how much. Okay. So but usually in a 10 milliliter and you can even ask it should it go in a five milliliter with the same amount be okay in the five milliliter and you might get yes you might get no okay thank you okay yes thank you very much you're welcome anybody else you'll have to thank mute yourself get kelly thank you thank you thank you you're welcome this, this was, was a lot of fun and so bloody informative i just I can't thank you enough. You're welcome. I'm having a lot of fun putting them together. Hey, Kathy. Yes. In the book, it says when applying essential oils topically to assist mood, it is important to get the oils as close to the limbic system as possible and apply them where they can bypass the blood brain barrier. And I guess that's why um, so many people have really good reactions when you put them on the face. And the false points, I bet, would do that too, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay. Teresa was asking, do you have to empty the bottle of oil? Oh, you mean to empty the full bottle in order to complete the treatment? Well, it's not really a treatment. And so you can... <sighs> You can use, I emptied out my one on pain, but I still have that one on the hardness of heart that I'm working with. So you don't have to use it throughout the entire thing, Teresa. Okay. And Carolyn asked, uh, so if I was to use the doTERRA cheer blend for Fatima, she wants to know how many drops that you need, Fatima, for your blend for the cheer. And, um, I get to write it in the chat. It's already in the chat. Oh, I'm just giving the answer to it. So that it was, uh, did I give you a, the number of drops for cheer? What did I give you? For my blend, it was 12 drops of lemon, eight drops of basil, 17 drops of rosemary, two drops of cypress, and 14 drops of frankincense. Okay, and then Carolyn was asking if we were to use the doTERRA cheer blend. Oh. How many drops in a roller ball? And I'm getting 20. Okay. Would you add anything else? Yes, you would add more rosemary. Anything else? No. It says rosemary is used to ward off evil spirits. So that oh, well, that was good. Something. And so you would use seven extra drops of rosemary. I want to thank all of you for coming. And I can't remember what the next one's on, but we are going to have a next one. And you'll get, um, I'll give you notice about when the next one is. It's in that email that I send you. I always just keep them, you know, delete the one at the top and keep the others. And so you can put that on your calendar and we'll have a lot of fun the next time. Take care. Many blessings Bye. to you. Thank, Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.